Hey folks, Mike with Chase and Trail here. It is a beautiful Sunday in late June. I am headed up to Lake Siskiyou, just north of Redding currently. Hopefully you'll be able to hear me over the wind noise. It's really pretty up this way. A lot of bikes out today, that's no surprise. A lot of trucks. There's Lake Shasta, nice and full. Be an absolutely beautiful day to be out in the lake. Getting a little tight in here. See some boats out there on the lake. Didn't expect quite so much traffic today, but what can you do? Got a bunch of slow joes hanging out in the fast lane. Sunday drivers, man. Another arm of Shasta Lake here. See the burn scar here. Oh, look at that cloud. That is a crazy looking cloud. I think it's right over the top of Mount Shasta. Looks like the thing erupted. I hope it didn't erupt. It is a volcano. Technically. That is a crazy cloud. That is tripping me out. I think it is right over Mount Shasta. I guess it formed its own weather. There's Mount Shasta. Obscured by clouds, but see a little bit of it. Definitely cooling off up here, which feels nice. Alright folks, so I took a little break. I'm here at Lake Siskiyou. It's just off to the my left over here. I had hoped to get some footage of the lake itself, but my original destination I didn't realize was down a gravel road. After having to ride a stretch of unpaved road yesterday, where they're doing some road construction, you can see it a little bit down here. Maybe there's a campground right over there, a little harbor. I believe you have to pay to get into the campground so I didn't want to have to do that just to go down there. And on the north side of the lake where I had originally planned, like I mentioned it's a gravel road and I, I didn't wasn't eager to take this beast down a gravel road again so. But nonetheless it's really pretty up here, nice and cool. I'm gonna head back home it's only about an hour and a half from my house. My wife and daughters just came up here a few weeks ago and camped with their school. And I have now put a thousand miles on this bike. So I can go ahead and do my thousand mile review. And as usual, I don't really have anything to share that has been covered elsewhere. There's Mount Shasta straight ahead. Can't even see the peak because it's all covered in clouds. It's formed its own uh, monstrous cloud over it today. Pretty clear skies except right over the mountain. And just this massive cloud. Golf course here. Be an absolute perfect day to be playing golf. Beautiful. So anyway, thousand mile review. I'll be doing a build video soon with all the things I've changed.
Uh, things I love on this bike, the looks, the sounds, the comfort with a caveat, I'll get into that. As far as the seat I got, the seating position and everything, it's fantastic. I could sit here and be comfortable all day long. I don't get any lower back pain like I have on almost all my other bikes. I think it's having my feet out in front of me that just feels really comfortable and nice to me. Or at least, you know, on these floorboards down below, they're not like forwards necessarily, but really comfortable seating position for me. Wind protection's fantastic. Only thing I don't like, I haven't figured out the bar situation yet, so I put these bars on. I love the way they look, and I love the control it gives you, raising them up a bit. I just feel like I have more leverage and better control of the bike. However, my hands are going numb after a little while, and I'm getting carpal tunnel in my wrists, which I have issues with anyway. I work on a computer all day, and, and most of my other hobbies involve sitting in front of a computer, so I don't have bad carpal tunnel, but I have a bit of it. And even on the ride up here, as I was getting close, I was starting to get a pretty bad pain in my wrists. Uh, this bike is not great on bumpy, windy mountain roads. I did a ride with my dad yesterday. That video will be posted before this one anyway, but safe to say I didn't have the best time there. That's not what this bike's made or designed for, so. Cruising off the freeway today, bike was fantastic. You know, that's what it's made for is long distance touring and it absolutely excels at that. Before I bought this bike, I was comparing these Harley touring bikes versus the Indian Challenger and I preferred the Challenger and I was actually pretty set on getting one but then I saw this one not too far away from me a couple hours away it was a 2022 with only 1100 miles and it was at a really good price I managed to get it for a really good price and so I had to try it because I wanted the experience of owning a Harley. I think it's absolutely a beautiful bike and there are a lot of things I like but I still definitely prefer the Indian Challenger and if I decide to keep a touring bike long term which I well may because I do really like the style of bike to me, the Challenger out of the box really doesn't need anything. It was more comfortable, handled better, and more powerful. It doesn't sound as good, and it's not as pretty, but I just like it better, and I don't have any brand loyalty or anything. so. This is an awesome bike. I do really enjoy it. So I don't know what kind of shitty review that is. Just my thoughts after a thousand miles. This bike's awesome. But uh, yeah, I still like the Challenger better. This bike is wonderful for what I'm doing right now. Touring and comfort. Again, on the Indian Challenger, the stock bars were perfect. I, I don't think I would change a thing on that bike, honestly. Just bone stock. The seat was comfortable, it's got an adjustable windshield. The audio was better. The bars were comfortable, like I just, I feel like out of the box it doesn't need anything. And I like that. See so, up, yep, Street Glide. Great bike. Won't be keeping it long term. That's okay, I'm enjoying it for the time being. Don't regret buying it, not one bit. After having done some work on the bike, it feels really solid, really well built, very put together. I have a couple minor things I don't like, 
I hate these shallow torque bolts they use. Torx bolts. They use them on the windshield. They use them here on these perch clamps. I stripped one on the windshield. I mean, it was my fault, but it stripped way too easy. I stripped these to get this perch clamp tight enough to where this wouldn't rotate. These got stripped out. In fact, I'll be lucky if I can get it off again. I mean, I know I'll be able to get off one way or another, but I would not reuse these bolts. I'd have to get replacement bolts, a new perch clamp, and that's like a hundred bucks. So one con is everything for Harleys are expensive. You can find much cheaper alternatives on Amazon, <clears throat> but especially anything with the Harley name is really expensive. A lot of the aftermarket parts are horrifically expensive. Like the uh, saddlebag guards I got from Harley, they're 300 bucks. Got them on Amazon for 150. Mirrors from Harley can be $250 for fucking mirrors. Got these on Amazon, 50 bucks. Harley wants you to buy their wireless headset interface module to use, you know, uh, Google Maps and stuff. I bought a Motorola wireless car or wireless Android auto adapter that's sitting inside the cubby here. That was like 80 bucks. Problem solved. Otherwise, you're spending several hundred dollars for Harley stuff. For Apple CarPlay, there's a little jumper you can bridge inside the fairing for free. But otherwise, they want you to pay. People sell dongles on Amazon for like 20 bucks. You do it yourself with like a 10 cent part. You're just literally just bridging two jumpers together. Floorboards. A lot of floorboards are four or five hundred dollars for a set of floorboards. These bars were four hundred and fifty dollars. Everything for Harleys is really expensive.